So in this video, I'm going to make a simple example of how you can dynamically debug the Linux kernel while it's running. We're going to do this using GDB, and I have here on the right side from the official Linux kernel docs, a guide here that talks about how you can debug the kernel. Now I have here a couple of steps. I'm going to just follow them on this video. So first, we're going to build a kernel with specific configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and start by running make many config. By the way, I'm going to have all the information about the dependencies in the description of the video. Over here, I'm going to search for config GDB scripts. And we can see we have here one result. So I'm going to press on one to select this. And it brought me over here. So I'm just going to click here, enter. And then I'm going to go ahead and select this option. So I'm going to press enter on this and select here, rely on the toolchain implicit default dwarf version. So I'm going to click enter on this. After selecting this, I opened up a couple of options over here. So I'm going to go and navigate to this line, provide GDB scripts or kernel debugging. I'm going to press space on this to select this. Now I can press tab and navigate to exit. I'm going to press on exit. And I'm going to save the new configuration. Afterwards, we can go ahead and build the kernel. So I'm going to run make minus J8 to split it to eight jobs, make the build a little faster. So in my case, it finished really fast because I already built the kernel, but generally it can take some time. But anyway, we got here the path to the binary of the kernel. So I'm going to use this later when we're going to run QEMU. But before I'm going to go back to the guide from the kernel docs, we need to configure a couple of stuff. First of all, I'm going to run make scripts GDB to build the GDB scripts. This is important to have the kernel GDB scripts. Now, before I'm going to start, I'm going to configure here one more thing. As you can see in the note here in the docs, it says that some distros restrict autoloading of GDB scripts to safe directories. We need to report that our directory of the kernel source is safe. So GDB will load the scripts from this directory. So I'm going to add this line to GDB in it. Just replace this part with the path to the Linux source in your computer. In my case, it's in the clone directory and then Linux. And this will configure it to be a safe path for GDB. So we'll successfully load the scripts from this directory. Now I'm going to go ahead and start Vim over here. Let's open up a terminal. I'm going to start by booting up the kernel that we just compiled. So I'm going to run QEMU system x86 64 minus kernel. And here I'm going to pass the path to the kernel that we compiled. That's going to be arch x86 64 boot and then bz image. I want to also go ahead and pass in minus s to QEMU and this will cause QEMU to listen on GDB connections. This will enable us to connect with GDB as a debugger. Also, another important option is minus capital S. This will tell QEMU to start the system suspended. This will just help us by causing the system to freeze until we connect with a debugger and explicitly tell it to continue running. Finally, another important thing that is also mentioned here in the docs is that we, we want to use the no KASLR option and pass this to the kernel command line. Reason for that is that KSLR will cause the kernel to be loaded on a different address each time it's boot it up. And this is a security measure, but it's going to bother us in the case we're debugging the kernel. We do want to disable this in our case. So I'm going to pass in minus append and no K ASLR. Now you can see QEMU has started, but we see that guest has not initialized the display. So it's just in a suspended state right now. It's waiting for the debugger and waiting to be continued. So I'm just going to put this aside for a sec and I'm going to open here a new terminal. And in this terminal, I'm going to start GDB. Now I'm going to do this by running, as is mentioned here in the docs, GDB VM Linux inside of the folder that has a Linux source code that we just built. Now you can see that we can start running GDB commands. I'm going to start by pressing Control L to clear the screen. Afterwards, I'm going to run target remote, which is also mentioned over here. One, two, three, four. This command will connect to the GDB QEMU server that we just put up. We can see how we now successfully started remote debugging and we're currently on this location in our program. Now let's just start here with a simple example. So I'm gonna put a breakpoint on the kernel init function. This is a pretty early function when the kernel is starting up. So for this, I'm gonna use hbreak. Now, why am I using hbreak and not a regular breakpoint? This is a hardware breakpoint. That is because these are the types of breakpoints that you're supposed to use when you're kernel debugging. Afterwards, I'm gonna use kernel init. Now you can see that we successfully set a hardware assisted breakpoint. So now I can go ahead and continue by running C. 
And now we got the breakpoint hit right over here. Also, it's telling me that I'm on the init main.c file on this line number. I can press N to continue to the next line. Now let's say I want to go ahead and dive into this function. So I can run the S command. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue to the next lines by running the N command. You can see that now Linux is initializing all kinds of systems, like MM is memory manager. Now let's go ahead and dive into this function, do basic setup. I'm going to use for this the S command, that's going to be step into. And here we have driver init. So inside of this function, it's going to start initializing all kinds of drivers. Let's go ahead and take a look by running the S command. And here we have devices in it. I'm going to step into this. And you can see that as I'm running the commands over here, the display on the right side is changing. So you can notice that while I'm running these commands, especially this command. You can see that it's now changing a lot. It's initializing all the drivers. And now we're at the part where it's waiting for init ramfs. So it's starting to initialize the user mode. And now you can see that we arrived at a panic over here because we didn't supply any user mode.